risk out there. Oh, yeah! You know, coming in here from out there, it feels like it's 400 degrees. But give it a little bit, it'll start setting there that it's actually pretty cold in here. Yeah, we got both of the arms built and just set on there. There's no bushings in the arm yet, but they're both uh, set in place. So, I'm gonna raise this sucker up, see what we got. I'm gonna start taking some measurements for the, uh, the wishbone. Yeah, there she is, huh? I mean, could you imagine? <laughs> Better ask somebody. Now, if I can make this thing drivable like that, it's a different story. It's one thing to put it on your cherry picker in your garage and lift it up as high as it'll go, but it's another thing to put a drive shaft in there and make this thing function down the road. But, that's what we're going to try to do. So yeah, with this thing up, I'm going to start taking some measurements on wishbone stuff. Figure out exactly where I'm going to put it. If you haven't ever looked at Lay It Low, which is probably unheard of if you're a lowrider guy. But if you've never heard of Lay It Low, you need to check her out. Okay, It's full of good quality laughs. Uh, some of the... Uh, early wishbone topics because wishbone a wishbone for the impalas hasn't been around forever it actually hasn't been around that long it's only been around for i think about 10 years from what i could see on Lalo anyway um but some of the early ones people take them and they'd weld the mount dead center and they'd start complaining about having the rear end shaking and vibrating around well that's because the center of your your drive shaft actually is not the center of the pumpkin on this car. I'm assuming, I've never had to measure, but I'm assuming on some cars, the center of the pumpkin is the center of the, uh, the drive line also, but on an Impala, it's not. So you have your, your drive shaft there that runs up, and I'm assuming that mark, just standing up here and looking at it, that mark right here looks like center to me. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking is the case. So I'm gonna have to do some measurements to verify that, but uh, I'm thinking that is what it is. So hopefully that'll make life a little easier with putting the, the wishbone brackets on. Doing a little arts and crafts here. So I'm making the uh, bracket for the top of the rear end. I just made two tabs. As you can see, that's how that will mount on there like that. The final design, the tab, is actually about a half inch, quarter inch longer than that. So it'll sit up a little higher so I can get more of a pivot on it before it hits the pumpkin. And then I got a piece it's going to be for the backer. These will run like this, and there'll be a backing piece on it. So, cutting out three pieces. Um, this is not really plasma cutting work, which is kind of disappointing. This is more uh, cutoff wheel work. Not as fun, but whatever. That's what I got right there. Should work. Go ahead and weld her on up.
didn't show it to us before he ground it down. Couldn't show us the welds before he started grinding on it. No. Okay, I couldn't. Alright, it was an off day for me. Sun was in my eyes. The wind was blowing. Messing up my shielding gas. I had something in my eye. Couldn't see quite right. Okay, it wasn't my best welding. Alright. It penetrated. A little too much. It was running a little hot. But welds didn't look the prettiest, so I ground them down. Also welded inside. Yeah. That'll be pretty strong, especially when it's welded onto the, the pumpkin. There is a fair amount of work that is needed to actually weld that on. You need to make sure that thing is straight in every which way it can be straight before actually burning that thing on for good. Uh, just, just eyeballing that. It looks like it's a little crooked. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time just going over everything to make sure I got this thing level with the axle centered and this way whatever that's called but make sure that's straight how am I gonna do that I don't know figure it out I got a tape measure Frickin' day is it? Holy crap. Kinda blacked out there for a second. I actually forgot to even turn on the camera. I think last time I had this camera on, I uh, was trying to mount the wishbone bracket on top of the rear end. I don't remember much after that, okay? Got a little crazy. I just started plasma cutting and measuring and welding and grinding and hacking and beating and <sighs> it's all a whirlwind. But anyway, I got it on there. Okay, it is on there. Looking pretty good. I've already had to cut it off and retack it seven or eight, fifteen times or so, because it, it's tough to get that thing just right, and it might not be just right still. I'm going to have to wait until I actually get the wishbone installed to figure that out. You can also see that it's missing a big piece of metal, which is now over there. I just whacked that out, I think. I think I just whacked, I don't know. A lot of stuff's went down the last day and a half. So that's gone. And I'm just going to have to, uh, we're just going to have to live without it, okay? If you want a high lockup, you want to call out King Tut, that's what you got to do. You hack that out. I'm not hacking out the bottom of my drive shaft tunnel, though. Sorry. Not happening. Uh, I'm probably going to end up running another reinforcement, a heavier one, across the back here. But that's on. Also, in the madness, something else happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is. Wishbone. That's a heavy sucker, too. So I got that side pretty well smoothed out. I still need to do this side. One side will definitely be more visible. I'll make that the nicest side because that'll that'll be what you see when it's locked up because you'll be able to see this. Um, I 
nice little finish piece. Thin metal, just sheet metal. But I'm gonna put that inside of there to help finish that off. Grind that sucker down. Put my hem joints on there. Figure out how to bolt that up. Some spacers and whatnot. So I did not turn on the camera for any of that. Reason being, hear me out, okay, hear me out. I really don't have anything to show you on that because I have no clue what I'm doing. I still don't even know if that's going to work. So it took every ounce of brain power that I could muster up just to do that. I couldn't even figure out how to turn on a camera, to be honest with you, while I was building that. It, it takes a lot of figuring to build that. Um, and I still screwed it up. So, whatever. Whatever. I think I saved it. I think. Yeah, I mean, it ain't perfect. It's got its flaws, but don't we all? <clears throat> so, hopefully that works out. But, yeah, I, I, I didn't have anything to show you guys building that. If you have any questions on how I did it, don't ask me. Okay? Because I really, I don't, like I said, I blacked out when I came to. I was grinding on this piece of metal, and my GoPro was on. So, I really don't know. As you can see inside of there, it's just tubing, cut at some angles with a sleeve down in there, holding the threaded insert that goes on to the, the rear end. And then this is just plate up here, smoothed out. So pretty straightforward, but it's just kind of tough to get everything just right. When you're messing with suspension components, everything's got to be just right. So. Forgive me for not turning on the camera, but I had really focus. I mean, stupid focus on that. So that's what I've been doing. I'm going to clean this thing up. I need to get some bolts and figure out how I'm going to mount that to the frame uh, so I can weld those in and I can tack the mounts onto the frame so I can actually bolt that sucker up and then raise up the suspension and see how it holds up. Hopefully it works. But for now, I'm gonna get back to grinding on this thing, okay? Making her pretty. Now, I don't think I'm gonna have it chromed. Um, I like to get chrome when I can get chrome, but man, it is so expensive for chrome. Um, I just, I know it looks cool, but for me personally, I'll enjoy it just as much if it's painted or, you know, coated in something. I mean, yeah, the chrome, all-time dream. But for, like, a set of chrome A-arms, it's like $1,200 for uppers and lowers for the front of this thing. I could spend $1,200, I mean, rebuilding my new engine. Got a motor. I could spend $1,200 on that motor and go pretty far with it so chrome at this point in time for me on this vehicle I'm, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of um, I did get some chrome uh, telescopics for the back um, those aren't the cylinders aren't a whole bunch more money to get them chrome so I went ahead and got the chrome there so wherever I can afford to do the chrome I will but on this thing I'm probably just going to paint it um, maybe see if my, uh, my buddy can do some pinstriping on it or some, uh, some gold leaf or something like that cool um, but I think a lot of these parts that I'm building, I'm just going to go ahead and paint. I just have such a mountain to climb to get this car ready that, you know, like, like I've said before, I don't have all the money. So try to conserve what I can, where I can, because it's still going to be a cool car. I'm still going to have a lot of fun with it. And down the road, that'll give me something else to spend my money on. Bunch of chrome. Yeah, I'm getting sick. I'm getting real sick. It's probably all this grinding dust.